Hi, this is an example of what you can do with Quantlab when running it in a real-time mode. And today's session we're going to try to figure out um, the weights uh, of an index, the constituents of an index, by just observing the market and observing the last trades and we have also the the answer, the index itself uh, that we sample. So uh, what we have here is uh, the OMX index and we have, uh, we're sampling now uh, from the market all the quotes, the last quotes, uh, last traded and we have the index itself in the in the right hand column and we have uh, the number of samples in that we're learning from uh, in the left hand column and we have asked the system to uh, first sample at least a hundred points uh, before we start doing uh, uh, our, our guesswork on uh, what the weights of each uh, component would be to get to the index. So we can see now that uh, in the beginning we have 200 samples and our weights are, are obviously way off. Um, since we don't have enough information yet to uh, accurately get the weights back. And so in the top graph we can see our estimated uh, index if we use the weights that we currently get with the current quote. And the red uh, dot is the, is the true answer, it's the index itself. Um, so we can see we're, we're not quite there yet. We have some spikes and, and you can see from the weights, the weight column is in, in percentages and we calculate these using last night's uh, last, the close of last night to get the percentage weight uh, because obviously the, the weights are fixed uh, each morning. So, uh, but the size is estimated. So the size is the number of, uh, uh, units of stock that we need uh, to to get to the the true index value. So we can now see that um, we have around 500 points, and as uh, usually most stocks trade not simultaneously, but but one one at a time. We need to to get information from each and every one on how they move and how that moves the index in order to get a, a good uh, projection of, of um, uh, a good estimate of, of these weights. Uh, so we will probably have to wait uh, a bit longer. And what we can see uh, uh, from this is that we still have some negative, we have no restrictions on negative uh, weights and obviously we can have negative weights in, in a official index so so we're gonna have to wait a little longer um, so how is this done uh, this example is done uh, by writing some some code and and uh, I'm not gonna go through it in detail but but uh, we can see that we're we have one startup code that, that fills the data uh, that listens to the real time uh, so from from this row we get uh, the vector of quotes uh, uh, that we listen to in real time. So every tick that we get will go through and get the quotes from from each of the constituents of, of the underlying index, and then we're sampling the index itself in the next row. So these two rows are the ones that actually are triggered each time that we get a tick from the market that uh, enables us to to fill our learning matrix. So so then we try to, from this, learn uh, using a, a multiple linear regression. Uh, we're not doing, uh, this is our simplest form of artificial intelligence. We're just trying to make a linear regression from all the constituents quotes onto the index itself. Uh, so it, it is no more magic than, than this. And we're forcing the linear regression not to have a constant since we don't have any cash in this index. So we're going to let this uh, run for a little while. Uh, we're soon up to a thousand points and we can see 
Let's zoom in on, on the graph. I'm going to disable the y-axis and the auto zoom. And we're going to try to see how close we're getting. Um, and as you can see, we're, we're getting a lot closer. Down here, we have the, the errors. So we can zoom on that as well. Let's see if, uh, how big the errors are. So these are absolute errors. So we're now below one whole index point error for each uh, uh, for each uh, estimate that we're getting. Uh, and as we're updating our, our indices in real time now, we're, we're obviously getting closer and closer to the true um, value of this index. So uh, I'm going to stop now for a while and, and I'm going to get back when we have, I think we're going to need about five, six thousand ticks to, to get this right. So see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. We're about half an hour later and uh, we have continued sampling. We're now at 6,000 sampling points, as you can see. Um, and uh, what we can now see is that um, our errors are still um, continuing to, to become smaller. And we can see that uh, uh, our estimation and our true answer are playing uh, uh, catch up uh, and in quite a nice fashion and I think uh, some of the <clears throat> issues here are also now derived to uh, timing issues when, when we plot but um, we can zoom in and you can see the, the scale of this so we now have uh, 6,000 uh, points that we have estimated for the last half hour so we can see that the from the start we are actually hitting the index quite close. So we can now safely assume here that our weights are more or less the accurate weights uh, for the OMX index, and uh, we can see that uh, it's on the second, on the first decimal. Uh, or second decimal actually uh, that we're getting changes now so we could be quite confident that we have at least to the first or second decimal the correct weight for each stock in the OMX index without actually knowing the index constituents uh, weights uh, that we've just estimated from the 6,000 ticks that we've gotten from the uh, market and uh, well that was the uh, thing I wanted to show you. Uh, obviously, you can do this exercise by using an index with less accurate numbers and, and do the same thing. But in this case, we're just trying to, as accurate as possible, predict the, the weights uh, using the, the true uh, values and the true answer with which we have in each row here. Okay, that's it.